Hey, hey, happy Monday. Hope everybody's doing well out there. All our friends across Facebook. Um, it is Acquisition Manager Monday. This is part three of our series. Um, and I'm super excited that I've been able to keep this going. Uh, there's always a lot of things coming in and coming on um, at different times. Um, what's up, B? Um, and I'm just, I'm wanting to make sure that I'm consistently doing this. So, um, I think the guest of honor, John is there. I'm going to bring you on camera in a second, John. Um, but just to recap, so our last Acquisition Manager Monday, we reviewed what? A few things. How to outsource um, our core values and what success looks like in the role, as well as how to train an Acquisition Manager. And what I wanted to do and some of the feedback that I got um, was people that wanted to really understand how to just kind of do their first deal and how to get the ball rolling. And then also I wanted to keep them a little shorter. So uh, we'll try to be really quick. I hope everybody, uh, you know, like Brandon, I hope that you brought some questions because I'm going to bring John on live. Anybody else that has any questions, um, for sure, make sure that you type them in the comments. Um, before I get going with John, a quick background on, on my business. Um, so I started in 2016 um, by myself. I partnered up with my business partner, Marvin, in May 2017. And uh, we got some cold callers. We were ready to go. We were rocking and rolling, pumped up, um, and started making a lot of calls, producing a lot of, um, generating a lot, a lot of leads. But we weren't doing deals from those uh, from those leads, and the the root cause was me right here. I had too much going on. I was not able to uh, get out enough contracts. Um, as I recall, like ten contracts sent out in a week was like a stellar week for me. And I, I'm, I'm sure there's some of you that are, are watching. Uh, hey, Donnie. Um, you know, sometimes they, that, that may be a good week, but it's not enough if you want to consistently do deals. Um, and so what, what we actually ended up doing was finally pulling the trigger to get an acquisition manager. And so that's why this is super important. That's why I wanted to be able to provide value, um, by, um, and, and teaching you and showing you guys how we brought, um, uh, we started to do more deals um, just by simply adding somebody that's solely focused on acquisitions. And that's what this is all about. Um, my background in hiring over the years, people ask me questions um, about that. Indeed is, you know, super, um, it, it's, it's super useful. Indeed actually can get the job done. Um, there's no uh, substitute for experience. You just got to get out there and make your first hire um, and do it. And, um, you know, along the way, you'll be able to, um, you know, fine tune, you know, your hiring style, fine tune, um, you know, finding exactly what you're looking for in a hire and uh, fine tune that process. Um, and so I went, went through a few ways of hiring for VAs, a few ways of hiring for cold callers and a few ways of hiring for acquisition managers. Um, and, you know, John is the one that stuck. Uh, we'll probably give him some su support here soon. Um, but, uh, yeah, that, that's it. Like once you get that locked in, um, like that's the most important part again, um, just doing uh, and getting somebody to consistently, um, make offers and assure up the most important part of your business. If you're a real estate investor is acquisitions, Wes, whether you're a landlord, a flipper, uh, rehabber, whatever, um, finding properties at the right price and acquiring them right. You should not lose unless something catastrophic happens. Um, so that's why this is super important. So, so that's it. That that's that's a quick uh, brief recap. I'm about to bring John on. Um, before I do, if you guys like uh, like that, I'm about to bring him on. Give me some likes, some hearts. Um, let's let's make sure some people are able to see that we have um, we got John coming on. Let's see where he's at. Cool. So while we wait on him again, um, John lives in uh, Yucatan and um, 
hello hello are you there hey I man am. hey hello all right li live and in effect <laughs> um from mexico right hey, tell them exactly where where you where you where you're at i'm in merida yucatan it's like uh four hours away from cancun nice and everybody knows Cancun, at least uh, at some point <laughs> uh, along their, their, their journey. Uh, so cool. He's, he's down there. Um, and you've been with the team. We hired you, what, last summer? When, what month was that? I think, I think we're about to go on a year here in June. Yeah, Maybe nice. June is a year. Cool, cool, cool. So I'm not going to hold, hold up. I think there's going to be people that have some questions. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm not going to hold them back from those, but I did have a few questions I'm going to start you off with. Um, first one is just, you know, um, what was the hardest part for you getting going in real estate investing in general? And, and actually also to give some feedback, um, John actually uh, started off doing some cold calling for us. And I think it actually helped him be a, be a strong mm -hmm. acquisition manager, uh, found an opportunity to promote him. And, um, and so now he's here, but just, you know, so this question can be from cold calling or from being a lead manager. Like what was the hardest part about getting going, you know, actually be being able to speak to sellers and understand this business? Um, there was a, a lot of things, maybe that's a loaded question, but I think probably <laughs> just get, getting my, like, I was really nervous at first about making an offer and understanding if I, you know, if I was going to make an offer that was way off or that fear. Uh, but just mm -hmm. jumping in, calling and doing it, it, you know, I caught the hang of it pretty quick. So just, just jump. I guess it was mainly the hardest part was like my own self, my own fear of things. But jumping in relieved that. Yeah, man, that's, that's, that's real. Um, mindset is everything. And there's plenty of people that will say, like, that is the most important thing uh, about uh, being an entrepreneur in general. Uh, or being in the business of, you know, going out and creating, carving your own path like you, you've been doing um, is having a strong mindset. So um, super good point. Well, what do you wish you knew um, then that you know now about what you're doing? What's making you successful now? Uh, I was just thinking about that. I, I think it's uh, like most things. It's, it's a balancing act. So being able to right now, what I'm focusing on or, or trying to wish I knew is you have to balance between hammering and calling a bunch of people and then slowing down and diving into the ones that are, are worthwhile mm -hmm. and being able to balance that is, I think, where you, you get the most results. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Cool, cool, cool. Um, and while... I ask you this next 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 question. Uh, if anybody has any questions, uh, make sure you put them in the comments. Um, what's a tip or a trick? With, what's something that you would share with with anybody um, as a, as a tip for being good at acquisitions or being good at locking up contracts? Um, I, I I think the, probably the biggest part is just having good conversations. Is really developing good rapport. Um, and if you're while you're developing rapport and keeping them talking, asking open-ended questions, it gives you time to, to research as well and figure out exactly where you want to be in terms of an offer. So you can feel confident that the offer you're making is good. And then while it's, it's, it kind of hits both points, because as you're doing that and you're getting time to, to figure out what, you're, what you should be offering, uh, you can build good rapport. And that just causes them to want to actually do business with you. Mm -hmm. For sure. Cool, cool, cool. Um, hey, Martine, uh, what, what, what questions do you have for John? Brandon, um, what questions do you guys have? Real quick, so you came, you hadn't been to Atlanta at all um, mm -hmm. until, what, a few months ago? Yeah, a couple months ago. Yep, I surprised you with the uh, Amigos concert, right? <laughs> so you got That's experience. Bougie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it was a very bougie down. experience. <laughs> <laughs> I know we had some good seats, didn't we? Um, we um, so that was your first time down, literally, and, and so that is, I think that's super important that because people have that mindset that they can't necessarily do this from afar or do this over the phone. They feel like they, they have to go to each property specifically go on mm -hmm. appointments and you proved me wrong. Um, I actually, Marvin initially suggested that we try this model and I didn't, I wasn't a, a huge believer in it, but um, you know, you made me a believer for sure. 
Um, but there was uh, so there's some questions here, but I'm gonna get back to that because I want to know about uh, experience that you had on your trip when we went to uh, closing. So we'll come back to that one. Um, uh, but Brandon Chisholm uh, asks, uh, should he wait until he has a deal before acquiring an acquisition manager? And so I'll take that one. Um, you, it's all, that's like the toughest part. Um, I think, and that's kind of what I spoke to in the beginning. We were generating a lot of leads, but, you know, I was the one holding us back. So if you if you don't feel like you can consistently send out offers um, on a regular basis, I don't think that you should wait too much longer to um, bring on an acquisition manager because all day John is speaking to um, leads that have gone through our initial filter and he's making offers on them. Would you would you say that's right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. Correct. Miss Vanessa asks, was it hard? to step outside of the script when you were starting? And what was it like uh, learning how to evaluate properties? Um, yeah, I, well, I, I tend to, I like to take the script and, and make it my own. That, I mean, that's part of my nature, but it was definitely, at first you're sticking to it hard and kind of figuring out what, what's going on. It was very hard for me to start to, to evaluate the properties. I, like I said, that was my biggest obstacle at first was, oh my gosh, I'm gonna make an offer for 100,000 and we can only do 50,000, like, oh no. Um, right. so, but getting, so, you know, I was always like nervous and then you just kind of go with it and roll with it. And you know, that, that goes by the wayside and, um, yeah, not, not very hard once you, I mean, I, I think I picked it up fairly quickly and got comfortable with it. And like I said, if you focus on having good conversations, I think the rest kind of falls into place. Yeah, for sure. Um, we've already talked about this before, but if you lock up something too low, then you just got a bigger deal. If you lock it up too high, then if you have to terminate the agreement, then that's what you have to do. Definitely do it ethically. Don't be locking up contracts just to terminate them. And we don't do that. Let me ask you this real quick. How do we terminate? A, would, do you have a percentage of, um, in your mind of how often you're right than not, like out of 10 contracts? Not, I would say not very, every now and again, especially at the beginning, you know, I'd lock something up and then you'd be like, yeah, no, <laughs> that's not yeah. going to work. Uh, but not, I mean, I would say now, not very often. Um, and I think now I have a better feel for a contract. Like, like we just, we have one that should be coming under contract today, hopefully. Yeah. Um, all right. That uh, you sort of took a chance on it. I think it could work, but it may be a little tight. So, but I go into that um, kind of letting the sellers know, uh, maybe not assuring them as much that we're going to close it, kind of prepping them for it. Um, and I think most of the times, I don't know what the percentage is, but if we do have to ask for a reduction, it's, it's normally, or terminate, it's, it's very minimal. Um, so I'm not locking things up, I don't think, way off, if that makes sense. Agree. And I would say from personal experience, before you came on, just when I used to go on appointments face-to-face, -face, and I did that for years, I don't think I, I terminated it or went for a reduction just about the, at the same rate as you do now. So that's saying something. And I was actually looking at the house. So um, again, I think that it's not, um, it doesn't make, you know, just locking them up virtually. If you're learning the, um, the landscape and understanding the, mm -hmm. the numbers, I don't think that that, you know, increases that amount by too much. Um, uh, Stevens asks, uh, how soon after first contact do you send an offer? And quick note, Taj is right there. Actually, <laughs> uh, Taj works. He, he's going to come on here one of these uh, acquisition manager Mondays because um, I helped him get going early on, and um, and now he's he's doing better than I could have ever thought he's doing. So mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna bring him on. But Taj asks, how soon after the first contact do you uh, do you send an offer? Um, it, if it all goes well right away, um, some people aren't. Um, depending on the situation that that's ideally you try to have a conversation and send an offer and then but some people don't aren't ready for one or check back with me next week or let me check on this or whatever but usually within the first or second conversation that they're getting an offer cool good stuff um mr john doe asks what exactly is your job description um do you know that? Do I? Know I don't that? know what my job is. It would. <laughs> <That's> a <laughs> tough question. No, I, right. Um, 
I guess I could describe my day. I get on the phone. I, I call people. I have um, basically calling through like uh, leads that the prospectors have sent over, kind of power dialing, um, hitting those for the first time, talking to them. I also have a, a I schedule myself appointments. Um, you know, here in a little bit, I have to call a lady who said, call me at, you know, one o'clock or whatever. Um, so I call those, but it's, it's a function of just, again, balancing, calling people, setting appointments, getting offers, emailing texts, balancing all that and keep, keep it moving, um, to get as many offers out and, and talk to as many people. Yeah. So, and to give, um, to give Mr. Doe a little bit more detail, the initial job that, John applied to um, was called telemarketing sales representative slash inside sales at Vietnam Property Solutions. And don't ask me where that title came from because it probably came from my partner Marvin kind of elaborated that, that job title. But the big, the, the important part was it was, um, it was a job ad that we put out, out there on Indeed and we tweaked those ad titles and descriptions a lot, um, you know, and you just you just do it, I mean, and um, as Tom Crow would say, progress, not perfection, just get the job out there and start talking to people. Um, what type of AM closing training did you go through? This is from Isaiah Freeman. Um, the training, so that, well, a lot of training was with, uh, with Brandon, you know, hands-on, listening to him make calls, me making calls, a lot of it was, um, like I said, my big worry was making the right offers. So a lot of it was him, you know, me saying, hey, look at this house. I think we can do X amount. And he would say yes or no because of this or that. So there was a lot of that uh, kind of back and forth um, hands-on training. And then in, in terms of um, did a lot of stuff, uh, re reading some books, never split the difference was great. Um, got a lot out Very of that. Cool. Um, fanatical prospecting was when we just read. I got a lot out of that too. Um, so really just kind of like ongoing training. And then when I came up there, uh, Brandon uh, made references when we came up there, I actually went to see a closing or a couple closings. And that was uh, just incredibly beneficial to uh, experience that and get in there, like uh, really, really get my hands dirty, <laughs> so to speak, uh, or with, uh, with the closing. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I'll give a shout out to uh, Ty Tobacks training. Um, because mm -hmm. Todd, as part of the next level wholesaling program, um, Todd has um, given us um, his um, his other training course, not the bigger deals course, um, but his acquisition manager training course that I was able to share with John um, as well. So uh, a lot of that uh, also, again, came from um, coaches that we all have access to. Um, cool. Donnie Wilson Ag. Um, do you capture an email and send an offer on every property? That's a good question. You said capture an email? So, so yeah, we, we do capture an email because the prospectors get the email address of everybody oh, who right. said that they want an offer. But do you send an offer, John? Do you have our VAs actually send an offer um, oh, on yeah. every property? Yeah, well, I, we typically we make an offer. I make an offer on every property, even ones that are we are not going to do business with, most likely. Uh, we still send an offer. Uh, preferably via email. Um, some people obviously maybe don't want to give you their email for whatever. Um, I send out, I, I really don't send out many offers. Uh, the, the VAs send out most of them. I uh, set a task for them. Uh, the only time I would send one out um, is when it's maybe some sort of really, something really customized. I need to change the language of something or it's really, really hot and they're like, I'll sign right now. Then I, you know, send it out while I'm on the phone with them if I have to. Um, but typically, I have the the VAs send out most of the offers. Cool, cool, cool. Do you have any advice for learning the the city from afar or the different areas of the city? Um, just again, I think that was all. I all kind of happened for me just making offers and seeing what worked and what didn't work. Kind of like try, trial and error a little bit. Um, obviously. Um, one of the biggest tips I could give for anybody is to just take tons of notes. So anytime Brandon, anything, anything was ever said, I was constantly taking notes and going back to those notes and was like, Oh, if it's, you know, this part of the city, I remember Brandon mentioned this and being able to piece those things together. Uh, also looking at other, other, um, other deals that have worked. So, Hey, we just did a deal, you know, the street over here for this and that house was smaller and in worse shape. So I think we can do this amount. So kind of piecing all those together is how I got a feel for um, the city without really being there. Mm -hmm. 
Very good. Um, and if a seller says that they wouldn't consider selling for months, um, are you still sending an offer out now or are you following up? I, I try to uh, send an offer now unless they, you know, they don't want to, or I feel like it's going to, there's some people who take, I don't know, you, you know, you shouldn't send an offer to them now because you might lose the deal. But typically, yeah, I try to, Hey, I'll send you an offer now. So you know where we're at and then I can touch base with you in a couple months. Uh, but typically try to get uh, all the offers out because you never know. There's always some people who just change their minds and sign. And that's awesome. <laughs> I like Yeah, those. right. I know. We like the uh, surprising, surprise deals um, that come back. How often do you feel about making, um, how do you feel about making low offers when the seller is asking for market rate over the phone? Um, for that, I mean, there's a lot of people who are, the, or who are that, you know, you can tell that they're not going to be a good fit for what we can do. I still send them an offer. Um, I don't feel, so, I mean, I let them, I let them know. I don't lead them on to think that we're going to be at market rate. So I'm already preparing them for what we can offer. And then I send them an offer just saying, Hey, well, here's our offer and you can have it on hand and anything changes, or maybe you have another property that would be a better fit. Oh yeah. I have this other property. So again, I think it's always, um, from what Brandon told me, from what I've seen experience-wise, it's always good to just get as many offers sent out. Yeah, for sure. There was a deal that, that we closed um, where the seller originally said he wanted like 200. Um, and we said, I think I hopped on a call. Um, and I said I could do like 130. And after a little conversation, he came down to like 150. Like he, he gave himself a haircut and I think we sold it for 170 in that scenario. Um, so you never know. Even if somebody puts up a block and says, um, you know, I want X, you never know. And then make sure that if, if you are having cold callers send those leads over, that you're kind of looking at those notes and making sure that they're not over filtering the leads out as well. Um, because if people will put up those blocks. Um, John Doe asks if you do any lead gen. No, you used to do some lead generation, you used to do cold calling, but these days, Everybody that you're speaking to, our, our prospectors have already spoken to them once before, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we'll uh, call probates, uh, but uh, true, that's the only true, one. True, true. Yeah, that's the only ones. Which probate ones are hot, so we like to keep them, keep the iron in the fire um, as much as possible. Uh, so Brennan asked, um, offer sent via email or mail. I heard someone say mail is a good way to take up real estate in the home. Maybe they would keep seeing the offer. Um, I'll take that one. So we send for the most part, everything via DocuSign, via email. Um, if somebody asks for a paper copy, um, we'll send it. But there was a time that we would send, <laughs> we were racking up a lot of, uh, a heavy bill, um, using, um, mail merge and click to mail. We were sending paper copies 10 days after the initial email offer went out for everybody. And I don't think any of them came back signed. So um, I think that's why we curbed that. And then additionally, I think Tom Crow had mentioned back in the day, um, like don't send them offers um, in the mail if they're not ready to go right now. Um, so there, I think he was saying that for a few different reasons. Um, I think he was saying if it was like a, a warm lead, um, if it's cold, you know, you always hear, you know, everybody gets an offer. So. I would say test it, but we tested it for a while of sending paper copies to everybody 10 days after automatically 10 days after they got an email offer and it didn't really return, return any results. So now as everybody gets an email, unless they specifically request a mailed offer, and that's been working pretty good. Um, characteristics, one should have to be a great AM. So I, I, I'll speak, I'll answer that one as well, because I think I talked about that last, um, the team member mindset, uh, coachable and, um, the, uh, good communicator. I think that was my top three from last week. Um, and I think, like I said, John fits the bill for all of those. Um, he's a great team member and he wants to be on the team and, and continue to work, um, with, with his peers and the group. Um, he's super coachable. So everything, like he said, like I wasn't telling John, like, Hey, write down everything. But he had like a bunch of notes on each of our calls. I didn't know he was even doing that. Uh, Cause I can talk a lot at times. And then, um, the, um, 
communicator. I mean, I think, you know, he, I feel like he's an extension of me. I think he can speak to anybody, any scenario, any situation. You need somebody that can speak to anybody, any, any, any situation. Uh, do you have any thing you add to that? Um, no, I think that's, you know, you have to have a, uh, I would imagine, I think, a, like a, uh, was it a, I don't know. I always say I'm a workhorse. That's what I do. I want to work. I want to get in. I want to bust out calls. And, you know, I just, I think that's ultimately because it is, uh, you know, you're calling a bunch of people. It's not exactly fun to get rejected all the time. So you have to have that mentality to keep going, keep pushing. For sure. The last thing, and, and this is like a, a, a core belief of our entire organization is like personal growth and development. Um, we do like a weekly coach, a uh, weekly um, um, chapter review. We, we pick a book and we'll read through. And that's everybody on our, our acquisitions team. Um, yes, Vanessa, he is bilingual, so he can't speak <laughs> to Spanish leads, uh, which is super nice. Um, and I, I would hope that he is living in uh, Yucatan. Um, <laughs> but um, the, the ability and the want to learn and grow and develop. So I'll send different posts over that I get from Brent Daniels and what he's doing or Luke um, that worked for Brent at a time or, or Todd or, or, or Tom. Um, and these are the people that taught me, uh, or, or uh, John Martinez, and people that I learn from, and I'll share that with them, and he learns from them too. So having somebody that's wanting to, to continue to learn and develop and uh, fine tune his craft is super, super uh, good. One more question for you, and then I'll ask mine. Um, are there expiration dates on the offers, and do you send them signed on your part? So I'll, I'll, ask, I'll answer that as well. There, um, we do have what a thirty-day expiration on the offers. Oh, I think it. Uh, I think it's like a week, isn't it? For the no, you're right. Your docu sign. It's like a week. Your week. Five days. So I used to have them like um, thirty days, and I think that now they're a week, um, and they are signed. Um, and I've heard, I've heard other uh, you know different opinions on that that you should send them and not sign them. Um, but, you know, it, it, it's worked for us. I think we've gotten a few back in the mail sign from the other party. Um, but, you know, I would say test it. It's not it's not going to make or break you. Um, I don't think you'll see a big lift or a big boost um, one way or the other. I would say test it and try it out. Um, cool. Let me ask you this. So going back to your experience here, and I'm going to preface this by saying that uh, John is a former <laughs> Marine, uh, U.S. Marine, and he's he's seen, you know, he's um, been in the trenches, um, <laughs> but I don't think he had been in the trenches like this closing that we went to. So no. it was a crazy situation <laughs> <laughs> um, up in uh, Peace Street Corners, North Cross. So it was super smoking hot. Uh, we had a bunch of people show up at the property, um, and uh, they were sitting there talking with the seller. It was crazy. And, um, but the guy was um, honorable. He, he wanted to continue to work with us. But somehow, magically, somehow on that Friday, we had the seller and the buyer scheduled to close at the same time. So John, this was his last day in town. I had him come with me. And like the seller's in there. We go in, we start talking to the seller. And the buyer <laughs> shows up and I try to step out um, to like kind of keep him apart. And I realized that I couldn't keep him apart. So we had to you know, uh, have them in the same clothing room uh, at the same time. And it was crazy. But I'm going to let you speak to that. What was what was that experience like? And then um, you had mentioned that it maybe makes uh, it made you a stronger acquisitions manager after that. So tell me mm -hmm. about the experience first and then uh, why you think <laughs> it made you stronger. It was uh, it, it was uh, so everything, you know, like I mentioned a couple times is having you know, on the phone, having good conversations, building rapport. You know, we, you know, you can, some people don't want it, you know, don't want to build rapport. They just don't want to talk to you. But basically that, that's how you to get deals. Um, and this, um, this I think was just like small talk, building rapport for like two hours, nonstop, <laughs> face to face. And it's just, um, it, I had to pull from every experience I've ever had in life about anything just to yeah. keep conversations going. Um, but it was, I mean, it, it was like nerve wracking and my hands were sweating, it was crazy. <laughs> um, but, uh, but it you know, worked out, we walked out of there, it was great. Uh, but I think it helped me on the phone because if, I mean, if I can go there face to face and be in that crazy situation, you know, on the phone is, is essentially a piece of cake. You know, that's all they have to do on the phone is 
talk to people, keep them, you know, keep them building rapport and all that. And so I think this was like a, you know, boot camp for rapport building. Uh, basically, it was really, yeah. <laughs> it was, it was it intense, was. but really, uh, I feel like I learned a lot uh, that I can use on the phone as well. Yes, for sure. Um, and I think that goes back to the good communication skills. Um, I think this is something that goes unspoken in training um, to learn how to do this business uh, or be uh, in wholesaling and real estate is the ability to communicate and connect with anybody. You have to be able to find commonalities. You have to be able to speak to your experiences. There's more talking points than you could ever think of, um, but you just have to continue to connect with people, build a rapport. Because I think we talked about like race cars, eating habits, restaurants. So, like... Solar panels. If it was a long <laughs> conversation about solar panels too. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was it was crazy. I think we were even talking about the uh, the royal baby that was coming or something. The guy was from, <laughs> from Europe. Um, but it was it was it was an experience and um, we both came out of it like super pumped and um, that just goes back to like being able to think on your feet um, and communicate well. So um, good stuff, man. John, I appreciate you coming in and joining us on Acquisition Manager Monday. I'm going to have to definitely you. have you back for sure. Uh, remember, guys, if you're in Atlanta, uh, REI Live uh, meets third Thursday of every month. This Thursday at the West End, details will be in my profile, but we have an awesome panel of other investors um, that will be here talking about starting this business. You guys can come meet me in person. I'd love to talk to you guys about this business and any help I can give. So we'll be back on Mondays again, Acquisition Manager Monday next Monday. And maybe I'll have John pop in from a time to time or a time <laughs> or two. Um, yeah. But he's a rock star. So um, we got to make sure he's back um, you know, doing what he does best. So Sure. Cool. All right. You about to jump back into it? I'm about to. All right. All right. Cool. Bye. Bye, Thanks, everyone. Man. See you. All right. See ya.